Hello, everybody. It's the interview queen, Alicia Atut here, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you all to my interview with Alice Merton. Hello. Hi, Alicia. Hi, how are you doing over there? How are things going? Good, good. And yourself? Really well. To the point now where it's like you can't complain. Things are kind of settling down in the world. It, it feels nice. It definitely does. <laughs> things are opening up. Uh, the yeah. sky is a little bit brighter. I mean, not today. Today, the sky is very gray here. I don't know uh, what it's like where you're at, but um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Toronto, Canada, and it has been so gloomy these last couple of days. I'm just waiting for the sun to come back out so I can start working in the backyard, getting on my tan. <laughs> I'm in Toronto. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so cool. I miss Toronto so much. <gasps> wow. Oh my God. I, I lived, I mean, I grew up near Toronto, funnily enough. So it's just yeah. like a little piece of home. It's bringing back all the nostalgia and memories instantly, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. It really is. It really is. Ah, oh, Tim Hortons. I mean, I know oh, that's yes. a cliche thing, but like, I haven't had that in years. No, it's <sighs> funny because as cliche as it is, it's such a staple up here. And anytime I'm in the States working or anything, I always miss my Timmy house. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> but, it's been really interesting because, of course, we're going to dive into the music shortly, but uh, when it comes to the pandemic, it really has given a lot of people more time to chill, be at home a little bit more. So other than the music that's been keeping you busy, just how some of your downtime actually been spent lately? Um, wow. I mean, how has my downtime been spent? I was in the studio a lot. So as like when Corona started, that was kind of the period where I was heading um, into my studio phase anyway. Um, so we had just finished our tour in Europe. Uh, it was a smaller tour and we kind of said, okay, I need to be in the studio because we'd been touring for like three years and I just wanted to put music out and um, work on the next album. So I spent a lot of the time um, still working on music, but also, um, I don't know, like discovering new hobbies and just realizing a lot about myself. I think a lot of the time, I've had in the last year uh, has been spent just analyzing my behavior, analyzing my thinking, certain patterns, um, but also just realizing how incredible music is and being so thankful um, for music. Because like when something is taken away from you that you can't really touch and you have no influence over it, it's it just makes you so grateful that you've had the opportunity to do that. So. I go out on stage now and I'm just so thankful for everything. Right. Cause it went to the point where we have been going what a year and a half coming up on two years of not being able to actually perform, be on stage, be in crowds. So I can only imagine how incredible it must feel being able to actually do your thing again, because it was driving so many people crazy and I don't blame them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And myself included, like I am like, I just, I view, performing in a completely different light now than I used to. Um, and it just makes everything more special. It's cheesy, but it's just, no, it's, but tr it's true. <laughs> yeah. And when you do have a German tour on the horizon throughout the summertime, where you'll be able to perform a lot of the new songs we'll be diving into in a moment. So of course, uh, we were just discussing how much you miss it, but was there a certain aspect of it that you actually miss the most, whether it was just the travel, exploring cities, the actual concert itself, the fans? Um, I mean, I love traveling. So I think the travel was a big one of them, but I think it's also reactions of fans and just getting to like, watch the songs come to life in a live setting mm -hmm. um, and seeing how people react to them, see how people like sing along to the songs and like realizing that the numbers um, of people online liking things or watching things or commenting on things just then turn into like real people, you know? I mean, I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of artists and musicians say that, but it's just so nice to then not see numbers, but see faces, like actual faces. Um, so I definitely miss that. But I also just miss traveling and like waking up in a city on one day and then waking up in a different city on the next day. Yeah. Um, oh God, it's so special. It's so cool. <laughs> I miss that so much. <laughs> well, fingers crossed, you know, it'll continue to get better and better and you'll have more and more of that. <laughs> I mean, that would be amazing. <laughs> right. 
No, I did say we're going to dive into the music because you have been putting out some great tunes as of late, including your newest single, Vertigo. It's just this wonderfully chaotic and infectious banger of a track, but it also kind of serves as your first new music in years. So what was running through your mind when you finally got to the point where you realized, I'm sharing the song with everybody and it's now like, take it or leave it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had written that song just before COVID started in Toronto. Um, and I think I have a very special connection to that song because I wrote it like near where I grew up. Um, and basically what went through my mind of writing that was wanting to create something, wanting to, wanting to just be experimental and kind of go in a direction that's a little bit more rockier um, than my previous album. Um, and just having fun with it because I've been dealing, I think oh, so many people deal with it, but I've definitely had issues in the past being able to go on stage and performing because I felt so anxious or, uh, before interviews feeling very nauseous and, and having like panic attacks. Um, and so I wanted to write something that has like a powerful feeling every time I sing it so that it's kind of tricking the mind that like every time that I feel that anxiety, but when I sing it, it's like, okay, I remind myself that it's actually a powerful feeling. Um, so it's like turning something so vulnerable into something so powerful and, and kind of um, tricking my brain. Um, but the whole process of the, the song, making the song and making the video was just so much fun. Like it, I just, I was reminded how much fun it is. <laughs> I know that a big part of the song as well is just about that, that feeling of fear of being judged by other people in public. And of course, the more that you grow, your numbers continue to rise and uh, the more judgment is thrown your way. So for you, other than music, is there kind of another way you've been able to deal with that over over the years or just something you've used as advice, a distraction to kind of get away from it? Because I know for me, if I see something come through, it'll it'll bug me and then it kind of, you know, water off a duck's back. But I'll go to video games some television just to get my mind off of it. <laughs> um, I like that so do you play do you do video games then to kind of distract yourself from from that that's it's so a, cool it's a big way to unwind because the the bigger you're, that you, you you get in your career uh the yeah. further you go it's amazing how many people are awful in the world and then you know you can have 99% of people I, I say this all the time but 99% of comments can be absolutely wonderful and that one percent that's rude those are the ones that mess with that's you. The one so, you remember the that's rest the of one your you life. remember. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll just kind of get my aggression out playing video games and then I'm good yeah. to go. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I was thinking of getting like a boxing sack. I was oh. thinking of getting like uh I mean, this is just to help me kind of deal with any kind of anger I have or like aggressions, whether it's then stuff that happens online or people commenting on stuff. Um, but to be honest, I, I think I've become really good at not letting that affect me too much. I think that's mm -hmm. something I worked on in 2020, um, is realizing that there's going to be songs I put out that not everyone's going to like. Um, but the thing is, if I like it, that's all that matters. Cause I would never put out a song in a moment and say, I'm not really a big fan of it, but I'm going to put it out anyway and just see what happens because it's not really who I am. Like I really want to always be hundred percent behind what I put out. And if I think it was the right decision, if I'm really hundred percent happy with it, then I have to also accept that that's the risk of there, that there's going to be a risk of people not liking it um, and that they're going to voice their opinion about it. But as long as I know that it's done, it's in that moment it felt right. I don't know. It's like this, this feeling of security of feeling like, okay, I can fall back on my gut feeling this. I can fall back on knowing that this was the right thing to do in the moment. Cause that's what I felt. Yeah. Um, and so I've been very, I've been working on that a lot. I feel like that, that punching bag would be a nice little addition though, on the days where oh, uh, definitely. the punching <laughs> bag is that extra little kick. Better. <laughs> print out people's names that have like been mean or rude and just yeah. like, yeah. I but I mean it full of like Twitter handles and stuff. yes yes but yeah no having a punching bag I think can be very helpful yeah I'm with you on that that's something I might have to look into <laughs> Now you, you've shared before how some ways of kind of coping with that, that vertigo feeling is a lot of breathing exercises or gummy smells. So what are some of your favorite scents, whether to calm you or just make you kind of feel at peace? 
Uh, so one of my favorite scents is probably mint, uh, strawberry mint in particular. Um, I'm growing some of that in my, uh, in my little garden, uh, which I love. I lo what else do I love? <laughs> Lavender is a great one to relax. Um, I just love the smell of strawberries though. I think the smell of strawberries and the smell of fresh rain. If you could put like the smell of like rain that in a bottle, I mean, I would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's funny is I once had a rain candle and it was magical. So yeah, I like deep dove the internet. I, I think I got it off of Etsy and oh my gosh, it was uncanny how much it smelled like it. Cause I love that too. Like the freshness of it raining and yeah, yeah. So look into that. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm going to look out for that. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> well, the last thing I wanted to ask you about today is kind of tying it back to uh, the upcoming tour and just live music since it's coming back. So if you could see a one band live this very moment, which artist would you love to see in concert? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's so many. Um, gosh, who would I want to see? I mean, uh, I have to say, I've, I love seeing the Killers live because I feel like they put on a really good live show, but I definitely also like to see 21 Pilots, okay. probably also Dua Lipa, Lord. Oh my God, I couldn't, there's not one artist I could say. I You're creating that. a festival, that works. <laughs> I would create a festival in my mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would attend that, those are some really good artists. <laughs> Well, Alice, I want to say thank you so, so much for coming on here, for taking the time. It's been a delight being able to pick your brain and shoot the breeze. So I really appreciate it. Thanks, Alicia. Thank you for having me. Of course. To everyone watching, a massive, massive thank you for Alice for taking the time. And of course, be sure to check out alicia2.com for all exclusive interviews and features. We'll see you next time, everyone. Bye.